You're listening to episode 78 of the Let's Go Comic Show. My name is Justin, and when Matt is gone, he is busy. He is using his, his talents for, for something else, but that's fine. With me today is the devil of the Pacific Northwest. We got rad friends. Rad friends, rad friends. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. I really like that. <laughs> I, I'm gonna steal that. You gonna, dude? That needs to be your new Twitter, your Twitter header, dude. Uh, I don't know. I, I I don't touch my Twitter header. It's it's done, though. I'm not <laughs> I'm not touching that anymore. But no, I'm stealing that for my introduction. The Devil of the Pacific Northwest. I like that. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. There you go. Yeah, hey, I got I got gold. So, anyways, Mr. Paul Herman. Hey, <laughs> hey, the Devil of the Pacific Northwest. That's I am awesome. fear incarnate. Oh God, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thanks for having so, uh, me, man. Yeah, man, I'm excited. Uh, this kind of just happened randomly, and mm-hmm. it couldn't have happened on a, a I guess, a, a better or <laughs> hash yeah, <laughs> slash uh... sadder <laughs> night of news. And so Paul's like, hey, let's do a, a show on, on Charles Soule, uh Daredevil. I'm like, yeah. And then like an hour later, Daredevil's canceled on Netflix. So Bigger let's moment, just yeah. jump into that first. I'm going to talk about a rating system. Rating system is a gotta go. So if something's the most amazing thing, Paul, you're going to go, man. That is like the Bendis run of Daredevil. It's a gotta go, Whoa. in my opinion. I don't know Whoa. what you feel. I don't know what you feel, but I'm oh. like, man, that's that's a great run. Okay. If you're like, hey, it's it's a let's go. I'm gonna say that's Kevin Smith's Guardian Devil. I I love that story. You know, it's a good story. Hmm. Hmm. If it's just a go, if you're like, man, it's kind of like for me, I would say that's Anne Nassetti. Like mm. she doesn't jump out. It's good. It's not like man, but if you're like, dude, this is a trash juice run of Daredevil. And some people will say that's like Andy Diggle, you know? Ooh, yeah. yeah. Like it, it's actually not trash. It's, it's 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 a it's a it's a don't go. It's a don't go. Like oh, oh man. Oh man. And and, and they they tra- I'm just saying that's what it is. And and if it's absolutely terrible, like I'm not a huge fan of like the the Kessel stuff that was going on before. Uh, whoa 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 really? That was going on before. Was it Kessel who was doing that? Or the there was, was D- all weird. Hold on, it was D.B. Oh, Christinger, wasn't it? Like that—that that was his name. Who was With, it that did the book? I'm sorry. I hope I didn't throw Kessel. Kessel, on the bus. no who Kessel. Did, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Was when it was McDaniel doing the art when Daredevil? Yeah, had his, like, yeah. The guy who armor. did Nightwing. Mm-hmm. The guy yeah. who was doing Nightwing, dude. I we could I could do like a three hour show <laughs> on just on like reading because I've read Spider Man. For people who want to know my my DD cred. I want to make sure it's very clear. Okay? Yeah, you got so, to let them know. I'm gonna let them know. Just I'm gonna I'm gonna take over for a second, okay? If it's do okay it, with you, it. okay. I'm fine. So, um, I, I didn't really connect with Daredevil as much as when I was probably got I, I got older, but I always liked the character a lot. I've always uh, liked Daredevil, so I would always dabble in comic like in his comics. But my main comics growing up as a kid were X Men. Uh, Spider-Man, obviously, and Fantastic Four. Like I kind of yeah. rotated between, as, you know, you have an allowance, you have a limited amount of comics. I would dabble in other, you know, image comics here and there too. But yeah. I always gravitate, those were my Marvel books I'd always gravitate towards on a somewhat regular basis. So Spider-Man, you know, mostly Spider-Man and X-Men comics, but, you know, Fantastic Four was definitely a big part of that as well. But I've always liked the character and I would dabble in his comics here and there. Like, you know, this is the classic thing. I think me and Sean talked about this on a Marvel newscast where, you know, growing up reading comics that I would blow all my money at the comic book store. Like, you know, I do 20 bucks or 10 bucks. They'd be like, Oh, you blew all your money. You can't spend any more. Oh, okay. That sucks. And then they go to the, the grocery store and I would see a spinner rack and I go, Oh, can I grab this one comic? Oh, you're gonna spit your allowance. Oh, come on! It's like only a dollar twenty-five. Yeah. Okay, okay. You know, just to shut me up, and that's that's how I'd get like the daredevils and things like that. So that's when I think uh, the uh, and I got some of the Anacenti stuff that way. Uh huh. Um, and I've got I want to say, and I'll look up his name, but I think it's DG Christinger or something like that. I don't Who's... I don't know. He he did the. That's the guy you're thinking of who did the suit, the ninja suit. Gosh, I hate that. I you know what's funny? I like the ninja suit. I liked how it looks, but the story I tried reading um Fall from Grace, which is which is like kind of like the, the pinnacle of that whole that whole what leads up to that whole thing about mm-hmm. him getting the ninja suit. And it's rough, dude. Yeah. It's rough. Like it's bad. Like I, I and I'm a huge Daredevil fan. I went back and tried to read it and I'm like, nope, this is bad. Yeah, yeah. DG uh I, and I, I suck at like 
pronouncing names. So it's DG uh, K- K- Kissinger? Kissinger? I don't know. It's something like that. It's I'm close. Um, anyway, <laughs> Scott whole, Just that whole era, dude. I just... Yeah. I feel you. I've, there is. Um, I want to say he did. Lee Weeks had a, a, a run with Daredevil. His art was fantastic. Yeah. Um, Fall the Kingpin that Daredevil that he did. I have, I have all the issues. I have not read it yet. I'm ashamed to say I haven't. But uh, going back to my my DD cred. So when I got back into comic books, which was about 2005, and that's when Daredevil went into. Um, uh, the Bendis run was just wrapping up and I got literally right back into comic books right when Brubaker got on. And oh, okay. I was like, I literally bought the first issue knowing that it was like kind of what happened and, and knowing where I was picking up right where Bendis left off and that okay. Daredevil was going to jail. And from there, cause I was, and I all, cause I got into comic books back into comic books because of the films. I love the Daredevil movie. Like, I loved it. Like, I, I unabashedly love that movie. Wait, the, and, the Affleck one? Yeah, dude. Like, I, well, like, I mean, I say it's the only one, like, well, we're gonna right. have to get, we're, we need a separate conversation on this because oh, okay. I'm going to, man. What, yeah. Okay, what about okay. Director's Cut? Everyone so, was like, Director's Cut's so yeah, much Director better. Yeah, Director's Cut's great. It is. It's much better. It's, it's, I'm just it's like, more... all it does is give you more Coolio. That's about no, it. No, no, it is not, actually. That's where you're wrong. <laughs> so it gives you more uh, scenes with his dad. It gives you more. It gives you the scene with Maggie, um, with him in the hospital. Yeah, that's true. Um, and so there, and there's actually also a better. It's a better. It's better edited. It's better edited because there's the scene where um, Ben Affleck and um, I should come call him Ben, Affleck, where Matt and Electra <laughs> are in the rain and they're, they're kissing or whatever, and he hears someone cry out. Yeah. Well, in the regular version, he like ignores it and then bangs yeah. Electra. Well, yeah. which never sat sat well with me. It in the director's cut, he actually goes and it's it it they 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 they, they did it kind of weird in the in the original in the original version because it in, in the director's cut it goes right to where he's beating up this guy trying to find uh, information about the kingpin and the kids there and he goes I'm not the bad guy kid. Yeah, it's like right after that. So it's just. It flows better, and there's I, lo- I like the subplot of Matt actually like using like his powers as Matt Murdock to like yeah, you know fight to be a lawyer. So yeah, to be a, <laughs> yeah exactly. So I feel like it's a well more it's a well balanced or more well balanced film. Is yeah. it perfect? Not by any means, but no. But, I mean, it's it's definitely an early two thousand superhero movie. The, oh, for sure. My my biggest complaint with that movie is just how he becomes Daredevil by him. He he's not saving the old man. He's running. How the accident occurs, yeah, and I hated I, that. Yeah, I hated I, that. I, I, like, that's what defines Daredevil. Yeah, you know, but, like yeah, yeah. You know, the I, accident is because he was doing something heroic, not because he was running away from, you know, his yeah. father. And it's so for that, it's formality. It's for me. It's formality because he ends up taking. You know, he ends up overcoming his sight. You know, or using his getting the powers and, and overcoming it and, and training himself, which is right to the original comic books with, you know, obviously Frank Miller came in with stick later on and was like, yeah. Hey, you know, which is really cool. Don't get me wrong. I love that stuff. And, and the show does an amazing job, mm-hmm. but, um, but anyway, um, so I got back into comic books because of all these different, you know, Spider-Man movies. And I was at a call center and I started, I started going to a comic store right by my favorite, my favorite Mexican restaurant. And I started buying trades and the first trades I'd bought in years, Marvel trades, I had mm-hmm. bought in the Watchmen and League of, League of Extraordinary, Ge- Extraordinary <laughs> Gentlemen like three years before. That's a whole other yeah. story. Um, but I bought those, are the, you know, I, those are the first comics I bought of my childhood heroes. Yeah. And this sucked me in and I just started bu- like slowly buying them all. And that's when Civil War, Daredevil all happened or the Brubaker run started. And ever since oh, the Brubaker man. run, I've just been going nonstop. So I've, and I went back oh, wow. and read Great. all of Bendis's run. I read, um, all of Kevin, all the Kevin Smith stuff, mm-hmm. um, all of Frank Miller, obviously. Um, and a bunch of Anna Senti, uh, typhoid Mary stuff. And yeah. I've, so basically I've read like, you know, if you just count the volume one or volume two of Daredevil, I've read pretty much all of it except all for Bob it. Gale because Bob Gale sucks. No offense, oh, Bob. No, Bob, Bob Gale, Gale stuff is bad. Back to the Future, dude. He's bad comic writer. He wrote Spider. What part? Uh, what Brand- part did he when, created what, Echo? To... I believe he or Howard Mack or was it Howard Mackey? No, Mac- Howard Mack. No, Mackey. Mac- 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 you're right. Okay. Okay. Mackey. Like, what part did Gale write? 
he wrote he has a run in that Daredevil run or in that Daredevil in volume two right after um, Smith. And I don't like it like Mackie Gale. It's rough. And I uh. just couldn't get into it. But because I went because I love I love Guardian Devil. Like Gar- yeah. I think Guardian Devil is an underrated like Daredevil classic in my opinion. I mean, no, it's yeah, like, I like it. It I, It's so unconventional Daredevil that I freaking love it. Um, oh, dude, it, it, it. I mean, it definitely brought me back into Daredevil. You know, mm, I was yeah. I was reading Daredevil just because. It came in Costco. Uh, like they used to really? sell 30, 30 packs of comic books at Costco when I was okay. a kid, and my dad would buy like it was like eight ninety nine, and you get like thirty comics. Like some of those, four of those comics was like Transformers, Gru, yeah, and, yeah. like Alf comics, you know. Oh, I remember. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, hey, I got all these Alf comics. I but hear you. The first one I ever got was issue two eighty of oh. Daredevil, and it's an Nascenti, and it's JRJR, and it's a weird story. You're like. What with Inhumans? Heck? With Inhumans in it? Uh, it's like this it, angel chick he's dealing with. No, uh, oh, I, did, I don't remember. It, it's weird, man. I'd have to go read it. Okay, you no, know because there was, in the in the late 80s, she did, she was part of the Inferno um, uh, company crossover. Uh-huh. Where, like, where, you know, all these demons come over from, like, the Dark Child, New Mutant stuff. Man, we're getting deep here. Yeah. Let's go. I, I, this is like, Let's Go Comic <laughs> Show. It's like, I'm getting deep cuts right here. Uh, That's good. No, it is. It is. This is bread. This is my bread and butter. This is when I grew up reading comic books. So, no, Inferno when that happened, like Anna Senti had like all these different you know creatures and stuff hanging out, and it's really wacko. And then like there's like a Daredevil comic with just just guest starring the Human Torch. Which, which, it's the Human Torch. It's so weird. Like it's um. No, Anna, I know which. I think I, I roughly know what comic you're doing. She also did the uh, which I have. Did I read it? I don't know if I read it or not. I might have forgotten, but she did like the Acts of Vengeance. She was a part uh-huh. of that. She wrote that for where Ultron took on Daredevil. And there's a great GRGR cover of uh, Daredevil holding the uh, stick with the on uh, the end of the stick is a uh, Ultron head, oh, which nice, is such yeah. great imagery, man. J- that stuff's just worth it just for the, his art alone. I, that's my favorite. Like, yeah, his, his stuff. art's really good in in these books, man. Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, the, the, that's a long winded way of saying that I became a really big Daredevil fan once I got back into comic books. I haven't looked yeah. back since. He's my second favorite character, bar none. Like I've, like I said, of the of the all the comics I buy on a regular basis, Daredevil and Spider Man. Since I've got back into comics in two thousand five, I mm-hmm. have not stopped reading on a regular basis. Like I've read the, their comics, like yeah, pretty I, much I, all the way. I feel like Daredevil has been like the the hidden gem because I don't think it gets the love that it should in mm. in the in the Marvel universe. I really don't. I don't think it gets. He he, like, ne- he never does. Yeah, it's consistent. It's been consistently good, but I don't feel like it's been like hitting those like those beats where I'm like, dude, how come no one's talking about Daredevil, man? Because I'm I love this run, man. I love yeah. this run. And mm-hmm. there was a point I remember I was kind of getting short on some bucks, and I'm like. Am I gonna drop Daredevil? And then like <laughs> issue twenty five came out, and that cover just got me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the recent one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it, yeah, it was, it was before it hit the the you know six hundred. And um, okay, yeah, yeah. it's this great cover by Garney, and um, oh, Garney's amazing. Oh, dude, it's it's just this <laughs> black and white cover, and you're just and it's like the American flags behind him, and he's standing at the the mm-hmm. uh, whatever. And so, anywho, long story short, Daredevil. And it's over mm-hmm. until Ugh. it starts over again. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, let's jump in. Let's jump in real quick today. Uh, they had, th- this last issue of Daredevil, which was six twelve, right, um, mm-hmm. came out on Wednesday. Uh, is Thursday? Um, I actually read it today because I wasn't able to get out to the store, so I just downloaded it. I was like, ah, I'll get my physical later. But um, right before all this happened, we just talked about they announced Netflix is mm-hmm. canceling Daredevil after season three. What are your what are your raw thoughts on that, dude? What are your raw raw thoughts? Devil of the Pacific Northwest <laughs> thoughts. I uh, I'm devastated. I, I think yeah. I'm not surprised it was going to happen because of all the stuff that's going on with Disney Plus and yeah. Hulu and whatnot, or, um, or what they're doing. It makes it only makes sense, mm-hmm. but it's a it's a shame because Daredevil on Netflix that those three seasons are are really great. Um, yeah. I love all three of them for different reasons. I think they did a, a beautiful job of, of bringing a Daredevil 
comic character or the Daredevil comic book and the character and the costume and making it like come come across really well. All the characters yeah. for the most part, it wasn't fl- it wasn't like flawless by any means, but you know, it did such a great job of capturing everything. And, it, and like we had that show on Batman on film about adaptations. I feel mm-hmm. like it's one of the best from comic to screen, whatever screen that would be, whether a movie or TV adaptations ever. Like it's, it really does take the essence of all these critical parts of daredevil and they make them their own, but they keep such a, they do such a great job of keeping that uh, essence there that mm-hmm. it, it it's, 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 it's Beautiful. It really is beautiful. Great yeah, acting. I, yeah. I'm, I really hope at least dared. I mean, the other, the other, even Iron Fist to an extent, I feel like I like all of those characters and how they were represented. You know, mm-hmm. I hope that that's not the last we see of them. Right. I, I don't know if Feige's going to be like, okay, we'll throw them into the movies now or, or, or whatever. Who knows? Right, I don't know right, how right, that's right. going to happen. For some reason, I don't think that they're going to be just like, hey, we're going to throw all of this on the Disney app now. I don't think that's going to happen yeah. either. Well, I think Netflix owns their their shows, right? Like I don't they don't they can't take those seasons with them. I don't think so anyway. I don't think um, so either, but I don't also don't think they're going to be like season 5 on, you know, or season exactly. 4. Mm-hmm. On I Disney, don't Disney, you know. They're like, dude, we're getting freaking Loki. <laughs> we're getting Loki shows. And, right. And well, Loki it's not shows. Right. We're not I don't add these cats in there. Well, I don't think they're going to uh, use Disney Plus for Daredevil. I think you've yeah. already established the fact that Daredevil is a brand that you use for adults it's not really a kid brand um yeah not saying kids couldn't watch it with their with their parents i mean i i my my, my parents would probably let me watch it for the most yeah. part like i know? can't my kids can't watch it like well your kids are like what have. six years old i mean yes. well, six and nine and he's yeah like, wants to, he's like dad i want to watch your daredevil i'm like son you can't yeah <laughs> so, yeah well good. my parents are pretty liberal but my especially my mom she probably let me watch it at nine but like yeah. but i mean six uh, i for me personally, it would I'd depend probably, on the episode. To be honest, that that is true. I mean, I would probably skip. I'd probably fast forward or skip through the episode where um, he bangs Electra on yeah. the wrestling mat, like that. Which is, I, which I, I hate to be like a, a prude here, but like I have to. Yeah, feel but there's like just appropriateness for kids, you know. Yeah, well, no, no, but not like, but even for me as an adult, like I don't want to have like a scene where Electra and Matt bang on a wrestling mat. You know, yeah. I'm like, and like, just like when Luke Cage was banging Jessica Jones, I'm like, I don't need to see this. Like, yeah, I don't but it set up a great line for he's all sweet Christmas. Holy Christmas. Or no, no sweet Christmas. You're yeah, right. Sweet, sweet Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, 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 sweet Christmas. What am I thinking? No, I, I know. But like, it just it just doesn't sit well with me. These characters, I don't want to think them of like of them, you know, having sex for some reason. Like, I know oh, they I do, you. but it's just weird. It's like it's too close. Like, yeah, guys, yeah. I want to I don't want to, you know, whatever. But. Do what you want to do. Yeah, I, fade whatever. to black. Exactly. So, yeah. but no, the show is 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 a beautiful show. It really is. I, I thought season three, even though I was really pissed off, they didn't put him in costume at all. It was all it was in his uh, ninja outfit the whole time. Yeah. Um, I was very disappointed they didn't do that. Um, yeah. But I, I the, thought at least the last episode. You know, I thought so that. too. He's but you know, it right? Whatever. But you know what? Like it, it worked for the story, and I, I thought it was mm-hmm. fine. And it was good as they didn't just you know put bullseye in a freaking baseball hat and a jacket and go, it's bullseye. You know, they actually put him in the daredevil costume. So again, talk about adaptations of born again. Like it really was an amalgam of like born again and different care, different things. And it made sense. So to me, like it worked and they, and they nailed when like they face off in the series. It's like 100% perfect. I mean, it's incredible. So I, for me, it, it it worked, but um, but yeah, it's just a, it's a shame that they were not going to follow up on those two characters. But like yeah, you said, like, you get that last shot, and it was super corny, but still, it kind of it worked. It, it infers, oh, bullseye is coming because he has the mm-hmm. bullseye logo on his eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I was like, dude, that's like the one thing that doesn't fit with the tone of the show, and it's it's still yeah. for me. I was like, okay, we're, we're gonna see this guy again. Well, um, we're ho- yeah, hopefully. I mean, it it, it just like I said, it, I I don't think Hulu if they do put it, bring it to Hulu, which I think that's the the obvious place for it. Oh, really? I I think so because now Disney yeah, well, owns. Disney's gonna have it there, yeah. The, the, well, they're gonna they own the the they controlling the, share, yeah, of, of Hulu now. Um, and they already got I just, the Runaways on there, so yeah. So I feel like they've already. They, but here's the thing: Are they just gonna bring the actors again, or are they gonna reboot the whole freaking thing? Which well, I that's, hope they. Okay, so that's my final question before we get okay. into the comic stuff. Where do you stand on this being part of the MCU? 
Well, they paint. To be honest, they've painted themselves in a corner by letting them reference things like in the fir- especially in the first season. Oh, the first it, season is predicated upon the D- Avengers movie. Exactly. So I yeah. feel like I I kind of feel they could just loosely acknowledge what happened before, mm-hmm. and 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 just kind of. Uh, you know, I don't know. I I feel that they could do it. I feel they. Could I mean, just... shows have moved networks before. I mean, even like what's right. the like uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine. I mean, went from Fox oh, that's to good NBC. Point. Yeah, same and, continuity. You know. But here's the thing: they but can. I guess you're right. They wouldn't necessarily uh, show repeats from Fox necessarily. Yeah. They don't really do repeats anymore, do they? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't I, think I watch so. everything on streaming now, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So we don't really. Yeah. So I guess for me is as long as they're comfortable with knowing that the previous previous three seasons are on a different thing, and they yeah. can be like, "Cool, we can just pick up where we left off and just kind of do that." I mean, to me, that seems like the most easiest to do. But at the same time, Kevin Feige may want to mess with Daredevil and say, "And eh, that doesn't matter anymore," and then he can just wave his hand and it's, and it's gone forever. So I think that would be a bad move. Just I agree. Yeah. It feels like he's pretty beloved, like the way it went down. Oh, for sure. I and, think we're all, yeah. And you, and you even got, you know, Vincent D'Onofrio being like, I'll, I'll go up against Spider-Man. Let me know. How do I make this happen? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. <laughs> he's he's willing, like, come on, guys. So, anyways, yeah, yeah I, I feel like it's a part. There's a lot of people that don't. There's some inconsistencies with, like, who's the president and stuff like that. And I see that. I can I can blink my eyes and, and, and get over that, but. I like how they bring rocks on into it. Yeah, you know, me too. There's a lot of yeah. you know hammer, you know tools going on in Luke Cage and Iron Fist, and so well, right. Well, think about know. this too. I mean, if Pearl Mutter, if with, this is gonna be really weird, but you know, if Ike Pearl Mutter go leaves his position at Marvel for the presidency to help out Trump, kind of <laughs> is that one of the clear. rumors? No, no, that's where he. That's what he did. Like, oh, did he really? Ike Pearl, I, I, I'm almost 100 percent positive. Ike Perlmutter is is I know I, I'm almost positive. Research of why I talk about this. Make sure I'm not making this up. <laughs> I'm fairly confident that Ike Perlmutter he still owns Marvel, like or he yeah. still owns like you know he still controls it, but he gave up his like business decision, uh, like kind of or not business decision. What's the word I'm looking for? He stepped down as president to to work in Trump's office, and. Right. I swear, unless I'm reading something now, I'm like starting to doubt myself. No, but no, pretty, no, no, go for it, go for it. No, but I, I, I think honestly that there, he's not, he's not the office guy. He's not the president anymore. It's somebody else. And um, one of the reasons why, obviously, Marvel, you know, re, one of the reasons why Feige separated from the Marvel TV or whatever and it became two separate things because he couldn't get a lot. He didn't like Ike. Yeah. And now that Ike's kind of out of the out of the picture, and he kind of was like, I'm gonna. Go, because him and Trump are friends. Now I'm gonna look. I'm like now I'm like real. Was that a recent development or is that? That like... was yeah. I promoted Trump. Let's see what it says here. I'm gonna <laughs> like I know Trump. they're pals and stuff. Um. Oh dang! U.S. government to investigate Marvel chairman Ike Perlmutter's VA involvement. What see, does that even I'm, mean? I, 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 I'm telling you, man. It's um. Let's see here. Let's see how they're buddies. I know that for a yeah, fact. Yeah, they're buddies. Um. Let's see here. This is like he's he's year. been elusive. I've heard like he's been at things and no one even knows who he is, but he goes to all the premieres and stuff, and it's like, really, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, President Elect Trump appoints Marvel CEO Ike Perlmutter as um, veteran. Mm-hmm. Hold on, he won't let me click on it. Ah, come on. Yeah. I don't. Here's and here's the thing. Like these Netflix deals. If Netflix is choosing to cancel, then the deal's over. And Marvel owns right. these characters. It's not a Sony situation where Sony, you know, owns the distribution rights to Spider-Man characters. Mm-hmm. It's you know, Marvel can be like, "Hey, all right, cool. Well, uh, we're gonna bring our characters back and put them on this, uh, you know, channel." And thank you guys so much, you know, for kicking this off. You know, we're gonna <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna do what we want. You know, mm-hmm. right? And you know, and. Uh, who who knows? And some of the wording was really interesting on the article. It was like, for now, you know, I was like, oh, okay. Well, he, they and they say they say that they're going to be, um, you know, so that, that they're going to he's going to be in other Marvel projects. But yeah, Herar call This is back. This is um two thousand two thousand nah, seventeen. President elect Trump appoints Marvel CEO Ike Perlmutter as VA aide. So 
so yeah, so I, I'm pretty sure that I kind of stepped down to, to be uh, work with Trump and that thing, because I know I, they appointed somebody else to run Marvel, huh. and and that's kind of and that's why I think you see the shift now in TV and now that that, that they bought um, the streaming service, that's why Disney's letting Feige have control over the TV pro- productions like the Loki television series that's coming out, the Falcon and winter soldier stuff. That's why, that's why I think they've kind of edged out Ike. Like he kind of took himself out and they're like, okay, I, cause they, you know, Marvel owns Di- or Disney owns Marvel. So they can be like, you know, they kind of, I kind of came in with it as like a whatever, but now they're like, Oh, now we're doing our own thing. We're good. So yeah. I think, so now that Ike's kind of out of the picture, for the time being, and maybe forever, I don't know. I, I certainly think it probably is forever now yeah. that Kevin Feige probably has full control over TV, and that's where I'm wondering, does that come into play with Daredevil? Because obviously Daredevil brand is a, is a well-known brand. I mean, people yeah. like the show. I mean, he's, you know, he's had a... a he, don't forget, the film was successful. They yeah, were trying it, to make a sequel to the film for a while. It just never got off the ground because well, Fox was it was, was successful was enough for them to make Elektra, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I think when the Electra bombed, they, they got kind of cold feet because they were like, well, yeah. it wasn't a runaway success from Daredevil and we kind of tarnished the brand now. And then, uh, you know, so I feel like there was, I know they were trying to make a Daredevil 2 for a long, long time. And yeah. it's only because they were, Fox didn't want to commit another, you know, basically they didn't want to commit another huge budget to a superhero property because they were they were afraid it was going to fall because they had all these all you know all these other comic book properties weren't exactly raking it in completely you know so because obviously if it, if it had they would have it you know it was a very hit and miss still in those days because look at Ghost yeah. Rider had you know what's Mark Stephen Johnson who the same director directed Ghost right. Rider that bombed yeah. so ugh, that was yeah but then movie. they made Ghost Rider too which is amazing. Yeah, you, I, I will. I will fight anyone. That, that is, is just a schlock fest, and I think it's it's, it's just ugh. fun on a different grindhouse. Level, it's a grindhouse superhero film. Yeah, you can't. You won't. I mean, you won't have. I, to me, I'll never forget. We did the Modern Myth Media podcast on. Um, we were reviewing it. And I was the like, only person who liked it. I think John really liked it too, but I, I was like raving about it, and they're like, "Oh man, this is so bad." Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, "Dudes," because this, this came out right after Green Lantern. I said I'd watch yeah. this over Green Lantern any day <laughs> you know and they were like i can't believe you just said that i'm like dude, i'm just serious dude Man, it's that's, true that's a bold statement dude that's a bold statement it is yeah. i challenge anyone to get through green lantern now it's bad have you uh, tried to get through it i think it's i think it's like on the level of the fox fantastic four movies yeah you know? yeah and that's bad too it, i used to yeah, like the I mean, first it's, it's candy is it's Ugh. candy is it candy it's, dude, the, I was at the I was at the premiere for it and for I didn't Ford? know what to say. I didn't know what to say. De- Martin Campbell walks up to us because we had Green Lantern shirts on. And he oh was like, no! He was like, "Hey, how'd you guys like the movie?" And I'm like, "I like Tomar Ray. <laughs> he looked no! really cool." <laughs> I, it, it was just like you know, and he and he was like, "Hey," and he was great. He was like, "You know, we tried really hard to capture the essence of the characters, yada 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 yada." And mm. then I remember Jeff Johns walking out with Jim Lee. And oh, uh, no. Dan DiDio going to, like, the after party, which, you know, was shaped like a giant ring or some crap across the street. That's cool. Yeah. It, oh, the after party looked awesome. I think everyone thought, like, this is going to be great. And mm. I don't know. I, I was sitting next to the kid from, uh, oh, he's from that TV show, Modern Family. <laughs> oh, no. The, like, the, like, the, like, the son? Yeah, the son. Oh, like, my the, gosh. The, he was really not, young back then, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just, his mom was like, hey, guys, you guys like Green Lantern? Here, here's And then, like. And the kid just waved back. He's like, hey, guys. I was like, hey. Anyways, after the movie. <laughs> but Jeff John shoots this look to us like, sorry, guys. No, he did not. Yeah, I swear, dude. Oh. I swear. And I even called him out on it at a con before. And he's like, yeah, I remember that. Oh, wow. Yeah, it wow. was it was, it was, it was, fun. Anyways, okay. So Daredevil season three, season one, the whole thing. I'm going to give it. I'm going to rate it, Paul. I'm rating it mm. as a got to go. It's the best of the Netflix shows. Mm. It's one of my favorite things of all time. I mm. love it so much because I love Daredevil, and I think it honored the character. And I like Foggy Nelson, and I thought I wasn't because I'm like, John Favreau was Foggy Nelson for me. And, you know, th- just just the whole thing, man. The whole mm. show was, was great for me. So, yeah. Yeah. So, okay, man, let's jump into this final run of the Daredevil comic 
uh, Charles Soul, who just it, you know, like again talking about like where it's been in the mm. in the kind of the the run of the Daredevil. I mean, of the Marvel comics. I feel like the street level characters don't get a whole bunch of like pop all the time, and not. I don't think they always need it, but I'm like, man, you guys are snoozing on Daredevil if you're not reading it. Um, mm-hmm. So, what are some what are some things that pop out to you throughout the the last what is it forty or so issues? Yeah, so Charles Soule did a few things that were unconventional, and and one thing with, I, in my opinion, with Daredevil, it's really it's really hard to or really easy to fall back on mm-hmm. is you you have the Kingpin got mm-hmm. bullseye those are obvious obvious things and every writer tries to do their own take and spin on things and um i'm one of those people who wasn't a huge fan of mark wade's run me you i'm know? right with you dude i'm right yeah. with you okay cool because I, I a lot of people like like rave about it i'm like it was not that good it, yeah it, there were parts yeah. i i like icarus i think that's his name um the 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 basically like daredevil's like counter part essentially where yeah he does he everything daredevil but he can he can actually see as well um i like that character a lot that that section was cool there's a couple of cool things that he did but for the most part you know mostly i just like chris samney's art dude yeah no exactly that's you the, know? that's that's the one thing that you could say that was make it redeemable but at the same time it was hard for me to get into it because it was so not daredevil yeah it was so like it's so like retro like 1960s like yeah. i feel like samney it, it was they were a good combination wade and him like i read some of their captain america and it was good but yeah i, I just feel like it was it went a little too to the other, the, the less direction of like too lighthearted. And I feel Daredevil needs to has a balance where he tends to be a little grittier. And I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm all for giving a character a different take, you know, and, and giving a different spin, like the Carl Kessel, uh, some of that stuff from the 90s you were talking about yeah. earlier. That was, that had some lighthearted stuff. He was joking around a little bit, but it had the art still had a grittiness to it that I really, really liked. Um, but that being said, yeah, I know I wasn't a huge fan. So when Wade was coming off, I was like ready for anything. And I wasn't very familiar with Soul at the point at that point. I think he did an amazing Lando comic that I liked um for Star Wars, which is a which as you can find on anywhere on the Marvel Limited app. It's a Lando um from like 2015, 16 and it's fantastic. It's great. So I was like, okay, this guy's cool. I, I liked Lando and he's doing Daredevil. That's cool. And I love Daredevil. I'm, I'm not, I'm going to keep reading Daredevil. I, I went through like four years of Wade and that was pretty, you know, up and down for me and Diggle. Whew, and, uh, you know, so we'll, uh, we'll see what happens there. And I, what Wait, I th- hold on. Charles soul did it with Alex Maleev. Yes, that was he the artist. Did. Mm-hmm. Oh man. He was a with Lando. Daredevil. He was, he oh, was oh, yeah, obviously artist. right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Sorry. I was just like, there's a daredevil connection. That's all. Oh, and it, which is great. The, the Malib yeah. stuff is his work is fantastic. Um, all right. Sorry. Yeah. But soul, what, what was really interesting is that you have, you are coming back from Wade who was a lot more lighthearted with Sam Neill, that that team up, you know, there were some cool moments, but it, what to me, it was inconsistent mm-hmm. and it kind of got away from the essence of what I liked about daredevil. Yeah. And, what soul did was he, he brought it back to a grittiness. He brought it back to like a little bit of a darker edge, yeah. but he put his own spin on it and he did things that were more unconventional that I think more that most daredevil writers wouldn't do what he did on this. These, what you said, 40 issues on whatever he did. He was on the book for three years. He was on them for a while. Um, what he did was he introduced a crap load of new characters. Yeah. Like, and I, I got to hand it to him. It was like, that's ballsy. Yeah. Because you, when you have a character like Daredevil and you're like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and introduce like a brand new set of characters. And that's pretty much going to be my whole run. And that's what he did. Like there's pretty much only his new characters and, or at least with his new um, involvement or whatever, like he totally rewrote like some, not the mythos of Daredevil, but he just kind of started like showing a different side of it. Like, the whole blind spot sidekick thing. A yeah. great idea. I never thought of Daredevil having a sidekick. Again, yeah. thinking outside the box. Yeah. But I think the trip the trip to to China was a little mm-hmm. weird for me. I think that was kind of it kind of dipped for a little bit with me, but uh Really? I, yeah, I I just I don't know, for whatever it was, it just it, it was too heady for me, but hmm. 
I don't know, man. I, I one of the things I loved the most was Muse. Oh Muse yeah, Muse is a great character. Awesome, dude. I was like, what a freaking great character, man. I loved all that. Um, what did and you... for people, we should tell the people if they ha- if they're interested, we should tell. Yeah. Don't say what happens with Muse, but no, I'm what, not. We're, no, no. But what, what I'm saying is, we should tell the audience he's he's an inhuman, basically, right? Yeah, if, if, and yeah, he yeah, he like he'll create these like art pieces, and they it 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 they kind of come alive. I I, I don't, don't want to give too much away of how like it. Yeah. <laughs> But, he's super powered though. He's not like a yeah. street level. He, he's a he's he's got powers. Yeah, and he's and, messed up. Yeah, and but just a, such an interesting, an interesting like uh, the power set's interesting, mm-hmm. and the way. Ah oh, man, yeah. I, I don't. I want. I got to dance around it. I'm just check it out. If you're, if you're looking for, like new villains are so hard to create. Yeah, so hard to. I mean, mm-hmm. I, you know, there, I think there's a kind of an ending to a story, but it's really cool how he just interacts and then how he, he kind of, he pops back up. He comes back, um, you know, later in the run. I, I, I just thought he was cool, man. The- yeah. It's well, you talk about creating villains. And again, like it, it's so hard. And the first thing that soul does is he creates the, the character 10 fingers mm-hmm. and the, which is like this character that's affiliated with the hand. Yeah. And he literally is a Chinese uh, mob, like or a uh, you know, ma- not mafia, or it's Chinese criminal underworld kind of guy. Yeah. He's affiliated with the hand, and this guy ha- literally has ten fingers on each hand, and it's a weird idea. But like again, he's connected with Blind Spot. There's those connections. He comes yeah. later up. He's and I'll say he's involved in the hand and that, that whole trip. To, the whole trip to China to me thing worked just because okay. of, of the association association with Blind Spot and how it opened up that whole thing with the, you know the how do you, the cath the the, the Catholic like. Uh, Oh, oh, I love that. I love that. I do the like, crazy like <laughs> Catholic warrior. The Catholic armor, the Catholic warrior. Yeah, so that was so, awesome. Okay. So yeah. again, so again, like there's so Charles Soul introduces the idea of like a counter to the hand, yeah. which is like these cat the Catholicism <laughs> warriors that which to me I'm like, why hadn't someone done this before? Like this is like so obvious. He, I mean, and come it was, on. It, you know what was crazy about that? It just came out of nowhere because you thought like this priest dude was a bad like coming in. Cause yeah, it, it was when he was still he was he was still deputy mayor at the time, right? Like he was kind of filling in. And these I, guys. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, <laughs> dude. It, yeah, that was that was that mm-hmm. was so that came out of nowhere. That was a good like what? And it was so ridiculous, but it was at the same yes. time. It was it so was ridiculous. Like, it's perfect. It was perfect because yeah. the hands invading New York, which man, that happens all the time. So I'm not spoiling yeah. anything, you know. So like, you know, in Daredevil's like, what are we gonna do? And then all of a sudden, like, you know, oh, I got, I'll call in the my backup. The I forgot their name, what their name was. I mean, it's not that memorable, I guess, but it was a cool idea. And again, like Charles Soule is going isn't for the, it. Ca- the, the cavalry, right? Just isn't the it called the cavalry? Oh my god, it's, it's called the which, cavalry. How funny is it? <laughs> what a double meaning, dude. <laughs> I forgot it was called the cavalry. It's, yeah, it's like the cav oh the cavalry of cavalry. I don't know. Oh god, it's so good. <laughs> I don't know. That's, man. A, that's genius. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, it, and and what I feel that he does a great job of is he makes it seamless. It makes it go. Oh yeah, duh. Like, you know, it it, it is ridiculous, but it makes sense because like, oh okay, cool. It's it, again, and and when you have ongoing comic books that are never going to end, like this is. You're gonna to have to accept stuff like this. So if you're into this comic, if you're into comic books, you're gonna accept a lot of stuff like this as long as it's, it's done the right way. And he does it. He he presented yeah. it in a way where they're you know he even says that the Calvary's you know they're they're small in numbers and yeah. that's why you know they'd only go when things are going crazy. Which yeah. you can you also think why didn't they show up during Shadowland? But that's <laughs> hey, but you know Shadowland what? sucked. No, oh, that's true. They're like, they're like, Calvary's <laughs> like, oh, they can take care of it. Yeah, we got it. Diggle's got this. Well, they, they didn't I... have the evil. They, they didn't true. have the evil ten fingers there. Uh, maybe, yeah, I guess I don't know. But no, so Souls Run, it's not as as a, it's not as emotionally charged. I, yeah. I'd say as like maybe a Bendis and a Frank Miller. Or even a brew baker. I but here's the thing I would say, and I'm very curious what you would think. I put on the level. I don't know if I put on Kevin Smith's level, and the mm-hmm. reason why I put on Kevin Smith, I don't put it quite there, 
is because Kevin Smith really did a lot of different stuff and, and, and really did a lot of twists and turns, had a great mystery going for 12 issues or for you yeah. know 10 issues, did some major stuff in it and just had surprise galore. Whereas um, Charles Soule didn't have a lot of surprises that shocked you, but had a lot of great moments in it. And would, would you agree to that? Yeah, I think I would, I would say that. And I feel like he's setting the groundwork for more. Like mm. he he's he's leaving like the door open for hey whoever's next here's what I got you. here's what I have for you like the whole like oh god what's the name of the the um vigil the, the what vigil vigil was it vigil right no 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 the uh the what is it it's the name of the the new like thing you can call on in a so that you can put a superhero on the stand like oh. You know, the, there has been an end game like that was earlier in the you know kind of midpoint. Oh in the run. yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're, we're Matt is um he's fighting for for superheroes to be able to uh, be prosecuted. Yeah, uh, or not, not prosecuted, but um, brought to the witness stand, mm-hmm. and that they but they they they'd be credited, but they'd be they'd be credible witnesses. Yeah, and that they also don't have to expose themselves as you know who, their identities because they're on the stand and, and it protects heroes to do that so they can put away villains. Yep. And that's what, something like that. Yeah. And that, yeah, there it was, was like, yeah, it was the people versus Slugansky means we can put daredevil on the stand. That's what, yeah, so there was yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, it's kind of silly. You see daredevil like on the stand. <laughs> no, but, but see, but it <laughs> but makes sense. Great. But yeah, but in, in, and for, for people who don't know, Charles soul is a real life lawyer. Yeah. And you know, so that's where, I feel Marvel like felt like just couldn't resist putting him on the series because of yeah. his knowledge, and he definitely showed it. Like he definitely wanted people to, in my opinion, I could totally if, knowing that, and I'm reading like some of the dialogue between the characters. He really wanted to show people like this is like real conversations that I've had or not I've had, but like you can that could happen between a lawyer and dealing with superheroes. It was very interesting. Um, you know, like I said, it wasn't all. Like I wouldn't say Soul's run was flawless by any means. It had some ups and downs. Mm-hmm. There's like the, the, some of the art I felt like made it suffer. Like the She Hulk showed up one time and it was oh, weird. And that was kind of a but the, like but it wasn't just the She Hulk showing up. It was like it had tied with Tombstone. I love Tombstone. Big Tombstone oh, fan. You, did, you didn't like the Tombstone stuff. I didn't like Tombstone stuff. It wasn't. It just. It, it felt right. like he was. It felt like he was treading water because I think that happened right after Blind Spot, and I really liked what was going on with Blind Spot. I really liked the character, yeah, um, and Muse and all that stuff. So I feel like he was kind of following it up. And again, the art I don't think was very strong. And then Noto came on and blew it away. So it was see, like, I liked Mike Henderson's run. He was right before Noto came on. Well, there was there, but he, I think I know which guy you're talking about. Henderson maybe wasn't the guy because Garney switched off of somebody else but the guy who did tombstone i don't think it was it was henderson that was, was alec it? morgan I yeah think. i wasn't a fan of that stuff really yeah i, I wasn't a fan was, of that That was when he was going up against a lawyer that was that's yeah the that, mm-hmm. super lawyer like that yes. stuff was really interesting as he's going up against this guy i i will say but, i feel that was probably his weakest run weakest part of the run because yeah. it, it was bogged down too much in lawyer stuff now that, that now that you mention it I did like some of the I like some of the side more side conversations like when he's talking to the DA and he's like, or he is, he becomes a DA in this comic series, but then he eventually steps down and takes over yeah. and works for Fisk and he's like and he's talking to people and he's like I'm not the DA anymore, but this is what we need to do and you know I like more of like when it's more subtle and it's more on the side where he can really he can really get into a little bit of more you know a little more of a meat on that way, but I didn't like yeah. where it was like the main focus. But yeah. again, it wasn't bad; it just wasn't really my thing. I- yeah, I, I think I think the issue, I actually, the issue with the the tombstone stuff, I think he just looked weird to me. He looked like a big yeah. He looked he didn't look like you know your classic tombstone. Well, it's it's funny because there was kind of a tombstone stuff going on in the other books, like in uh, mm-hmm. what Bendis had going on over in uh, oh gosh, was it Defenders and then I think Miles Morales Spider Man. I'm getting kind of I'm getting confused because it was yeah because no it was Tombstone was dealing with Miles Morales stuff so mm-hmm. there's a lot of he he was doing a lot because at the end of I feel like at the end of Defenders it kind of rolled over into Daredevil some of the threads it felt like they were mm-hmm. picking up on on things mm-hmm. at the end of the Defenders run uh, all the street level heroes are kind of hanging out and mm-hmm. 
the next issue, they're all up in Daredevil. And that was like right before they all got thrown into jail. So uh, there's kind of like this. It, it, it felt like they were, they were like common threads. And they are just, okay, well, if this is going on over here at Defenders and you just wrap that book up, we'll, we'll, we'll fold it over a little bit. It felt pretty smooth to me because I was reading both. Right, right, right. Yeah. And I would yeah. definitely recommend reading the Defenders book. I thought it was great. I, I liked the first um I read the first arc of that Defenders run and yeah. I, I thought it, I thought it was solid. Um yeah. I just but here's the problem like Mar- as soon as the Defenders wasn't like this runaway smash hit with the def- Netflix, they yeah. pretty much abandoned it ASAP, yeah. which I thought well, was, it was a also shame. at the end like Bendis was going to DC, so they were Right. Like, oh. it, it, it was a perfect like storm yeah. of like, well, you know, let's do this. Um but yeah, like I I so yeah, sorry, back to the book. No, no, but no, really fast. I, I so when I compare of when, when I put Charles Soule's run, I would put it above Anne of Senti. Um, okay. And then they got to Anne. Anne did some cool yeah. stuff. You know, Typhoid Mary stuff is great. Um, yeah. But I, I would think that like I liked the overall run of her, his better than hers. Um, I would. It's not Brian Bendis good. I don't think. I don't think it's yeah. Frank Miller good. Obviously, I think Bendis and Miller are equal though. I know. I'm a, I think me and you are in agreement with this, right? We're yeah, both I agree. Agreed. I 100 percent agree. I think Bendis's run is phenomenal. Like I yeah. even reading it, even knowing what happens, I was blown away how good it was. Um, yeah. So I think Miller and Bendis, I think, are equal. Then I'd say after that, it goes um, uh, Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith stuff, and then um, then I would say Brew Baker. I'd say it's equal to Brew Baker, r- maybe a little bit better than Brew Baker, but not by much. Okay, yeah, I, I like Brew Baker's dude. Brew Baker just came in and he d- like, did a great job. It was yeah. solid. It wasn't the one thing I would say about Brew Baker though is that I feel that um, he never got his own voice as much as Bendis did. You know, you had. Uh, his Captain America stuff, he did his X Men stuff, because him and Matt Fraction eventually, they, he ended up helping him out on Daredevil too. It felt like Matt Fraction and Brubaker did stuff together for wait for Fraction everything. jumped in on Daredevil. I swear he did. I could be wrong, oh. but I know he did it for Iron Fist and things like that. And X Men, I almost I know Rucka jumped in for a bit. Oh, maybe Rucka. Maybe it was Rucka then. Maybe no, it wasn't. It wasn't Rucka. Let me look. Rucka, um, Rucka was in on it for a bit. I remember Rucka was for, in For uh, Daredevil? Yeah. No shit. Yeah, like it was right in the middle of the Brubaker run. He he came in and they like I they don't remember. Up. I didn't remember Rucka would be in a part of it. It was like early 100s, man. Like and it wasn't for a whole bunch and it was kind of like a mm. it was like a a, a, a a like a kind of a spy thing and like You're right. Yeah, Jessica you're Jones right. was in it. And yeah, yeah, you're right. Like Luke yep. Cage and all this stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah, Rucka did like 107, 108, 109, okay. 110. Okay, yeah, I, if, if he wasn't on it super long time, but yeah, but he, maybe I mean, yeah, what... he just dipped in like, hey, here's some guys I'm good with, you know. So yeah, yeah, no, no, it, it was a he definitely had co-writers a, a bunch. I do know that because he he was at that point Brubaker was doing like a crap load of books. Um, but no, he, I thought Brubaker's run was wasn't bad. It was I felt that. It introduced Lady Bullseye, which was cool. I like mm-hmm. Lady Bullseye. Yeah. Um, but uh, besides her, I felt like it, it was kind of hitting on some of the same themes and everything as everyone else did. And the Camilla, I like the Camilla thing, how he handled yeah. that, the marriage and, you know, and Matt and that whole situation. I, it was good. Let me be wrong. I think it was good. But I feel like Soul did more for the character than, and I think Rucka had more issues too. I think Rucka did a, a lot. He was on that he for did a, a long good time. Run, dude. Yeah, so I feel like Brubaker did a good job, but I feel like Soul did more and better with the character with less, and made a way more substantial. Like he broadened the character more that I feel like than anyone else did. Even like Mark, like Frank Miller did it. Like Frank Miller put, took the character and made and put mysticism into the, the character with Stick yeah. and and all that stuff. And then, you know, pretty much everything from the TV series is all from uh, Frank Miller stuff and then brought in that whole aspect. Yeah. And then and then Bendis brought in the idea of like all these past mistakes that that Matt did finally caught up to him and mm-hmm. the ramifications of being Daredevil finally caught up to him and really explored that in a way that no one else had really done before. 
Brubaker just took all those greatest hits and made it his own and did a great job with it. Soul took it and said, okay, I'm taking these aspects of Daredevil and I'm going to broaden it even more. I'm going to have them team up. Like, and Ascenti would have Daredevil team up with the Inhumans, but like he literally was fighting a brand new Inhuman villain in Soul's run and he became yeah. like his own, you know, and Ascenti tried to have him face Blackheart and different characters. And I feel like Soul did a, a great job of like, you know what, I'm going to give him that mysticism that Frank Miller did, but I'm not going to go overdo it where it's like he's in over his head. He's still in, he still can, you know, take these guys out kind of a thing. He, you know, again, giving him a sidekick, a great idea. I, I think Blind Spot's a really cool character. Yeah. Way better than I thought he was going to be, to be honest. And, and, he, and he can dip in and dip out too. He doesn't have to be there all the time. I just like it that he, he has a proje, you know, I would say proje more than a sidekick, you know. Yeah, like, that, that's a great. Yeah, that, yeah. I, yeah, I would say you're right. It's more of a it's more of a protege. Yeah, than a, and then than a I, you know, I like the stuff with Frank McGee, and then uh, what was it? what was the other dude with the dog? Oh gosh, oh like, reader, reader, reader and yeah. cipher. I, I yeah, <laughs> it's so yeah. you wouldn't think that they those guys would show up, and it was it didn't feel weird. It didn't feel like it's so out of it, yeah it, yeah. It was a good blend of that kind of Mark Wade feel. Mm-hmm. Would you say? Like, yeah, I would you know, say, yeah, the stuff I like with Mark Wade was when Silver Surfer shows up, you know, you have, <laughs> oh, I have, I've totally forgot about that. I haven't, yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. oh, dang. Silver Surfer. What a, what an odd, what an odd pairing. But, um, I didn't, I didn't not like that, you know? Um, mm, right. Anywho, uh, I think his whole run was to explore, like, I think the purpose of Daredevil in the Marvel universe, cause it all kind of, I feel like it coalesces really well in this final issue where then you have like the support of all the heroes there, you know, you can argue that like, Oh, let's just, you know, bomb the courthouse now. Cause freaking everyone's there, you know, right. uh, I, I, he, he was setting up, Hey, I'm giving you guys something because uh, having a, a superhero be able to be on, you know, to be, to be able to give testimony that that's huge like that mm-hmm. that's like i mean if someone wants to i'm not saying go there but that's like civil war three <laughs> you know yeah like, yeah like no, there's, exactly. there's some there's some strands if, if someone wants to pick them up a, i just realized you said you. civil war three and I, I was like civil war two oh yeah i forgot about civil war two that just happened yeah <laughs> and i i, I and for the record I, I remember i liking civil war two all right, yeah, it, was, all right. it was fine yeah yeah you're like i hate captain marvel now i like her again like it <laughs> Yeah, Captain Marvel. Yeah, that was that was so. Oh gosh. Okay. Yeah, that was yeah that was a that set up a really weird. Nothing beats nothing beats that 2005 era though, man. Like I like so I good. that to me like that I came in. I, I it's just fortuitous of me to come in during a really great time of, of comic books. Kind of a I, w- I don't want to say a renaissance, but that kind of is what it felt like. It, you time. came in at the time of the architects. Yeah. Yeah, he came. It was mm-hmm. it was Bendis and uh, oh gosh, Brubaker. who was up on Fantastic Four? It was um, on Fantastic Four. Yeah, it was Mark Millar Fan- was was on it eventually, but was um, he? who came he, in though? It, it was uh, oh, he did F four. He did uh, FF. Oh, oh yeah, hold on, hold on. Uh, Hickman, Hickman, Hickman. Yeah, yeah. And, which by the way, I think Hickman's Fantastic Four is overrated. You think so? And I'm a giant, giant Fantastic Four fan. Yeah. And I will challenge anyone that he, like, he was oh. just heady is all he was way too heady, heady. way like, too heady future force and all that stuff. But I, I mean, just, but that's when he came in though, where like yeah. Matt, with Matt Fraction on Iron Man and then, you know, even Matt Fraction on uh, God, his Hawkeye, like all that stuff. Well, that was so, later. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, but, can... I mean, but it, it kind of was all those We're... things begat these great so... fraction. What happened to fraction? He's gone. I haven't. Yeah. Who cares? Or... Oh really? You don't like? Yeah, fraction? I'm, I'm not a fraction fan. I think he's in. He's oh. he's not terrible. He's just really inconsistent. And I think really? that because mm-hmm, I think oh, Hawkeye dude, I was, was good. Hawkeye though. I Hawkeye was solid, but it, but no, I liked Hawkeye. I liked the first. I liked his uh, initial run with Hawkeye, but it, it got to. I didn't like. It was going back and forth between him and Kate, and I'm like, stick to yeah. stick to one character. Like it was like you know, I didn't like that. But then <laughs> what? But for, for but for me, it, his Thor was terrible. His Iron Man was solid. No, oh, I didn't read. His, I didn't read his Thor. His so. Thor was horrible. It was horrible. Um, no, but the, when I came in, you got to remember, and I'm going to talk about this on the on Patreon show a little bit for Marvel Newscast, but the little sneak preview. You know, think about this: when I got back in reading comics, there was the Spider Man, the other. Yeah. Okay, this giant Spider Man crossover. Yeah. There was Annihilation. 
Okay. Like, and then there was Planet Hulk. Like, this all happened at the same time. Planet Hulk, Civil War. Yeah. All of that happened in the Daredevil, you know, being arrested and thrown in jail. All in the same time. Yeah. That's all happened all at the same time. And you could not, there is so much for me to consume. And it would all worked out perfectly because, you know, where's the Hulk during Civil War? He's in Planet Hulk. Yeah. Where's all Annihilation people? They're all, and even Nova at one point even references, everyone's trying to kill each other on, on Earth and they're not even going to help us because yeah. of Civil War. And it was like, this is, it was like, I could not believe, and being a, an old school Marvel zombie and going right into that, it was like, I it sucked me right back in, no problem. Like, without any problem, I came right into it and was like, I'm ready to go. Yeah. So yeah, that was and, a, that was a good time, dude. It was. It was. Maybe people at the time were probably complaining, like, oh, like the blah, blah, blah. But, you know, for someone like me who just was, it was a, a beautiful jumping on point and I got on and it, it was, it was great. It was, it was yeah. great. But you know what? I'm buying the most Marvel books I've, you know, bought in a long time right now. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's not a whole bunch, but I'm, I'm buying Punisher, which is a book I never, never re- read. Never ever. been a Punisher guy. I, I would run, I jumped on like uh, a little bit when, I, I read the Marvel Knights one that was awful, where he's an angel. Oh. I was like, what is this? What? And you never, oh man, go get on Unlimited and just it's read It's not Ennis, is it? No, it's a, I forget who the heck was on it, dude. Serious, it's weird. He he came back as an avenging angel for a little bit, and then Wait, they even this? make fun of it. Ennis makes fun of it. Like, in the Wait, first what? issue of the Ennis run. Is this, is it, of, is it post when, um... Because in the '90s he kills Nick Fury, and then they don't they kill him afterwards or something. I don't know how he dies. I just know he was dead, and then I know they brought him back as an avenging angel. That's so amazing. <laughs> in in Marvel Knights, man, and it it was probably the only misstep of that of that um like era. Everything Marvel Knights was the best. Don't read. Don't read Magic Punisher. Where I don't even know. If, I, don't, I don't even know if they have. They probably pulled it. They're like, this is this is actually so bad. I heard Christopher Priest's uh, Black Panther wasn't very good though. Too. Chris, it, no, Christopher Priest's Black Panther was really good. Really? Yeah, it was good. Okay. Um, Fair enough. Yeah, P- Punisher for me is kind of a hitter. Is a hit or miss. I just got into it because I was mm-hmm. intrigued by the War Machine thing. I was like, oh, that's okay, right. That yeah. Okay. Okay. I know. What you're yeah. So about. I just like, okay, I'll I'll check that out. I'm not a I'm not a punisher guy like i don't consider myself that guy don't own that shirt but the 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 book was really was really cool and you know he had this thing going on with nick fury anyways and so the current book I'm, i was like okay i like this guy rosenthal who's writing it he he's got me i'm i'm here to check it out you know if you haven't said okay. matt it's matt rosenberg and then uh simon kodransky's doing the artwork on it and it's just it's just a pretty quality book and mm-hmm. Yeah. A- anyways, back into just the current Marvel books. Yeah, what, what are you reading? What like, are you reading? Uh, Immortal Hulk, really like. Um, I think Immortal it's, Hulk is amazing. Oh, by the it's way, such a good book. It's, and then, oh god, it's great. Yeah, last time I bought Hulk was Indestructible Hulk, and then because I thought that was fun, where he was working for Shield. I thought that was kind of a fun take. That's Wade. That's Wade again, and and you, yeah. you is great, but Wade, ugh, Wade is his loss of touch, man. I, maybe yeah. that's just me. Oh yeah, I think Wade. I don't know what you know. I've read some of his challengers. Eh, whatever. Or champions, sorry. Not good. It's a dude, don't be writing young guys. You can't write them well. You don't talk Oof. like a young guy. You talk like Rough. a fifty year old dude talking like young guys. So I, I just wasn't <laughs> I wasn't into that book. I uh, but yeah, Amazing Spider Man. I've been loving that. Uh Nick great Spencer. Spencer. Yeah, Spencer's been great, man. And Spencer's hit or miss for me too. Nick Spencer yeah, wrote here. Yeah. He wrote an amazing Jimmy Olsen backup back in DC before they did New Fifty Two. He was writing some Jimmy Olsen stories that were fantastic. Hmm. And I have a one shot of Jimmy Olsen because they canceled the backups, but they put the rest of them in a one shot. And I'm like, I'll read a Jimmy Olsen book if Nick Spencer's writing it. This is freaking great. It was fun. Anyway, so I think Nick Spencer's got a good voice. So Amazing Spider-Man's been great. And did, Hulk you, and did, did you read uh, Superior Spider-Man or Spider Superior Foes of Spider-Man? No, I didn't. Oh, bro, that's Nick Spencer's pinnacle. Really? Mm-hmm. See, yeah. I was never into the. I was never into like kind of the ancillary Spider-Man tiles. I was just like, okay. I'm reading so, Superior Spider-Man. That was it. Which is I, I, which I'm like, I'm like one of the main, like one of the. I feel like I'm one of the few Spider-Man, like hardcore Spider-Man fans, who actually thought Slot wasn't completely terrible. I, um, why do people hate Slot? 
I Dude, thought he I was listen- good. The other Spider-Man podcast I listen to, they hate him. They, they hate him. Well, did they not read Spider-Man for 10 years? Because that's... <laughs> well, no, that's... They, they, they could, no, they did. They read it, and they just complained about it for 10 years. And oh, man. So, I had... In the, in the podcast, I, they're, I, I understand it gets a little old, because I don't always hate everything. Like, I felt like for a while he was doing some of the great Spider-Man stuff, some of the best yeah. Spider-Man stuff in a while. And then... It got a little old after a while. I'm like, okay, a slot needs to go. And the yeah. last year, I felt like he was kind of dragging. But uh, no, Nick Spencer, he um, did Superior Foes of Spider-Man, which, you know, my wife doesn't read superhero comics. She doesn't like superheroes mm-hmm. besides Watchmen. She loves Watchmen. Um, but when she, there's a, ever heard of McSweeney's? Mm-mm. Okay, Nick Sweeney's is like this big art, artsy, like book thing that comes out, and it's a bunch of short stories, and you know, it's super artsy. And there's a magazine called The Believer, and that's super artsy and like about artsy stuff. They actually, The Believer, which is Mick Sweeney's and Believer, all kind of the same editorial like thing, kind of come from the same place. Um, they referenced and talked about and how much they liked Superior Foes of Spider Man. All right. Um, and. And it's, and I gotta say, it's really good. Like it's, it's some of the most fun, laugh out loud Spider Man or comic books you're gonna is read. Is he dipping into the the bar? Is that what this is stemming from? It's the, it's kind of, but like if you write, if you're reading, um, you know when Boomerang, it's Boomerang. It's yeah. about, yeah, it's all Boomerang. It's about him and Shocker and the and the female Beetle. Yeah. Um, she's the Beetle. I just, I just. I I have the old people for understand. There's an old beetle that like I always reference, and and the new I like actually like the new beetle a lot. She's great, um, but uh, no, you have reference to her, like the shocker, um, the the what's his name, Overdrive. All those characters are that all those things you see in Amazing Spider-Man comics you saw recently. Yeah, it's all referencing Superior Foes. What? And it's okay. great. I'm flipping through some of this, and it's fantastic. No, you go read it, Justin, and get back to me. Or we'll I'm, talk. I, dude, I got Marvel Unlimited, dude. That's what it's for. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, go that's read amazing. it and then get back to me. We'll, 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 I'll jump on the show. We'll talk about it. Dude, I haven't read it. Steve Liber, dude. This art. Oh, dude, it's great. Oh, it, it's, it's, I, you'll blow. It's a really easy read, too. You'll blow yeah. through it really fast. And it's, it's laugh out loud. Like, you will All laugh right. out loud. And Spider Man's not even in it. It just happened to be an offshoot of the Spider Man comics. Um, oh, gosh. All right. Jim. So, anyway. Yeah, I know, dude. It's, it's great. It's kind of like the, remember the Tangled Web of Spider Man with that kind of. Um, it's like it's like Deadly Foes. It's a spinoff of Deadly Foes, basically. Uh, yeah, no, I'm just saying, De- but it's kind of like a, a, a nice uh, anthology. Well, it's not an anthology. It's just, no, it's not an but, anthology. But uh, it's but it's an ongoing story. I just that I think I did. I really love those. You, did you ever read the Spider Man's Tangled Web or whatever it was? I I didn't read Tangled Web. That doesn't sound familiar to me. Oh, dude, man, that is a good. Sp- Sorry, this is supposed to be a Daredevil show. That's a no, good no, book, it's cool. Dude. But no, but, 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 but we're talking about Marvel stuff. We're picking up, and, and obviously, yeah. for me, I I'm Marvel has not been doing super great for me lately. Like they, they they're heading the right direction with giving um, Spider Man. I mean, it was Nick Spencer? I think Nick Spencer's done a great job so far. Mm-hmm. I'm really intrigued with new Centipede villain. Um, so he's got me all wrapped up with that. I'm, I'm really excited about that. I don't know. Um, Immortal Hulk is amazing. I think Immortal Hulk is the best Marvel comic out there. Like, really? I don't think you can do better. I think it's fantastic. Um, I think Daredevil was pretty good. I think it was one of the better titles. I think Darth. Vader, I think Charles Soule's Darth Vader comic is maybe <laughs> one of the best. And I'm not kidding. It's one of the best Marvel comics you can get out right now. It's incredible. Um, but uh, but you know, I had to drop Moon Knight. I thought Moon Knight was terrible. Oh really? Um, A lot of people were like talking about Moon Knight. How it was great. Really? Yeah. Like, really? They need to get Bemis off there, man. I don't care what band he's in. Get him out of there. Like, seriously. <laughs> Wait, what band is he in? Say anything. Oh, that's and that's kind of like a... That's right. Uh, that's a, Here's the problem. I've never been a fan of his music. <laughs> I actually like his wife's music more than his music. Um, she was in a band called Isley. You yeah, yeah, I know Isley. 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 Yeah, she's, mar- she's married to the lead... So one of the, the lead singers is married to the, the guy from Bemis. That's right. And then, um, which I actually like Isley. I think they're actually a good band. Um, yeah, but they don't do nothing no more. That doesn't surprise me. Uh, but anyway, but yeah, so when Bemis got, I, I read Fool Killer. He did Fool Killer. And I'm like, okay, Fool Killer is, I, I'll give it a shot. Eh, not my thing. 
and then they put him on Moon Knight following up freaking Jeff Lemire, <laughs> yeah. his incredible Moon Knight run. I'm like, man, Bemis, who I, you know, whatever, he's following up Jeff Lemire. That I, if that was me, if I was, and I want to write comics one day, but if I was writing comics, they're like, hey, you know, Paul, you want to write Moon Knight? I'm like, oh, hell yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah, follow up Jeff Lemire. I'm like, nope, I don't care how much money you pay me. I'm not doing it. Yeah, there's no way that guy is. A, he, that guy is a, a he's a legend. He's in my a beast opinion. already. Yeah, he's yeah, like, he's already say, a beast. Black Hammer's amazing. Moon Knight's amazing. I've only read very little. I already can tell he's a legend. Oh man, yeah, it, he's a legend. Dude, you got to read his. Oh god, what the heck is the book right now? Sweet it's, Tooth. Not Sweet Tooth. This new great. one he's doing. Uh, I, I should have like an issue right by me, dude. I have a I have a fat stack of Descender. Books right here. What is it? No, it's Gideon Descender? Falls. See, I I'm 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 one of those. I'm I'm only uh, I'm half a step away from just diving into all Jeff Lemire stuff because everything I've read of his I've all I've loved. Oh man, Gideon Falls really good. I'll I'll, I'll check it out. It's on your eight issues in right now, and I think is it Image? Yeah, it's Image. Okay, and I'll check it out because I Black Hammer. I like I don't know if you have read that. That yeah, is I got that. That's it's on break right so, now. Yeah, I just I bought the second volume just recently on the Dark Horse uh, sale because and I I, cause I I had the subscription to Comicsology. And I read the first run or first uh, volume, and I went, "Oh, this is great!" Yeah. And I, so I, re- I bought the first volume again. I'm like, "I'll read this again eventually." <laughs> and then uh, I bought the second volume, and I'm like, "Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna dive into this eventually too." Um, yo, but so Bemis followed up Lemire, and I'm like, "Okay, let's see where this goes." I read two issues. I went, "Nope, not even close." And it usually took me out of it because there's a part where he's this guy's like hallucinating, and he's got. And I feel like Bemis was like being a little too like tongue in cheek with himself. He's like he had one of these people like kind of like dying, going "Punk's not dead." I'm like, dude, oh jeez, why'd you do that? Saying like, anything is not a punk yeah, band. Anymore. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, but right, no, but like just the fact that he's like, I'm into music. Let me show yeah. you. It's like, dude, I don't care what music you're into. Why'd you have to do this? It's stupid. And like, the care. I just, yeah, I'm. It's I'm, just stunt I writing that doesn't pay off. Like no, someone I don't has know. said, Kevin Smith was stunt writing, but he's not because he obviously like. Like, it's, I, I feel like yeah. when he takes on a book, it's like, man, he's, I just. Well, he's an actual it. writer. Yeah. I mean, Beavis Greeno, writes music. Great. I mean, yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. Like, Green, which Greeno was great. I read, I read those comics too. I thought it was all great. I mean, he's a script writer. He actually yeah. has experience writing scripts. Like that's yeah. what comics, you know, I'm not going to say like, if you write scripts, you can write anything, but like Kevin Smith wrote scripts for a living for films and then made a comic book. I mean, those are yeah, what, very what, similar what mediums. say anything. What made him? Uh, I don't know. Eligible dude. to write a book, just like hey, I, man, I want to write a book. Hey, you know, people can. You know, you know, I, again, CM Punk I have wrote a book. Dream, well, here's the thing. I, I'm all about like you know giving people a chance because I, I think writing yeah. comics is not rocket science. It's it's you have to have talent, and yeah. I I think he's ta- I think he has talent, but I just don't think he's the right person for Moon Knight. Yeah, um, but they so, probably weren't like we're not going to throw this cat on Spider Man. Right. Well, they shouldn't. If he, if he was ever got on Spider Man, I'd. Rage. You know, but you know what I'm saying. So I'm like, what was the gamble with Moon Knight? Like, okay, Lemire's out. Let's 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 throw say anything on. The, on <laughs> well, I mean, they put anything. Brian Wood on it after Warren Ellis. So I mean, what do you, yeah. you know, what are you gonna do? So or Brian, whatever his name, Brian, is it Brian Wood or Brian Reed, one of those Brian names. Brian Wood. Brian Wood. Yeah, it wasn't, and that was not good. And then Lemire, he basically took whatever schlop he put on, and just when, made when it like. When is Stephen Platt coming back? Oh, see, dude, right. dude, you just did the biggest deep cut like <laughs> ever because that guy was I, everywhere. Dude, hold on, hold on a second. I'm about to blow your mind. Okay, right. so people who are listening are probably like, "What the hell are they talking about?" Who cares? So listen, listen to this, <laughs> Justin. Do you remember when he was on Moon Knight and everyone thought it was Rob Liefeld? Oh, dude, yeah, it was. A yeah, huge you remember? Deal. Yeah, yeah, it was a huge deal. I and I remember. That that comic became one of the hottest comics in Wizard. Like they said, it was a like top ten just because of like this buzz of like, oh my god, Steve Platt's like the next superstar. And I don't even know what happened to him. I think I even googled him a couple of years ago. Like, whatever happened to that guy? I don't. Um, know. No, but listen to this. I found those his comic books at a half price books. Oh really? And and they're like actually still worth money. They're like forty bucks still. Like you could sell them like easy. I got them for like a dollar. I was I was like so stoked, and I got I think all the issues. I think I have all. The, wait, no, I'm missing like a one or two issues, but I have most of the issues that he did for Moon Knight, and they're great. They look great. They're, wow. they're super great. But no, it's funny. You, I can't believe you brought up Stephen Platt. I don't know why. I just I, I don't know when I think of Moon Knight, 
it pops up because it was such a big deal. He, he was only on it for like four or five issues, though, or six it, issues. I, I don't know, dude. I just know. But he did. Nuts. It was. I know it he was went a big crazy, deal. and I know he became like a. He was trying to be a stand-up really? comic. Oh yeah, he went nuts. He went nuts. Yeah, dude. It's funny you say Rob Liefeld because Rob Liefeld was like, "That guy's crazy." He was like, he kind of called him out because I guess he had an image book too that was supposed to come out in a. I, I don't know what. The oh heck happened yeah, and he. uh he he never let them like print the last issue. <laughs> I remember this. I kind of think we remember this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh my god, that's fl- and then he became a stand-up comic, and then he just dropped off. Yeah. The face well, I think of the he's earth. in the film industry too. I think that's what he does, like conceptual stuff. So makes sense. He's a he's a conceptual artist. Mind. Yeah, he's yeah. got a brilliant hand. I wish if I if I could draw like that. Oh man, I'm, he was. Know. I think he was a little overly. He he was definitely a product of the '90s, you know. Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah. Like I mean, what are you gonna Todd do? Todd McFarlane image mm-hmm. style. Yeah, and that's you why know, he was everywhere. You know, you know, Moon Knight was always one of those characters I always wanted to get more into. I just didn't have the money. You know, like Daredevil was one of those characters, but I always, I always would dabble a little bit and go, "I like Moon Knight." Um, one of the one of the covers of Moon Knight that I always go back to is when he's burning his Avengers, uh, Avengers membership card. Oh. Dude, like I love that. I love that. I, that cover sticking cover it to so the good. man right there. So so baller. Such a Moon Knight move. Um, <laughs> like I remember, like just the. I remember when Moon Knight had the when Black Spider Man suited uh, showed up because like he, it took place right after he took on Morbius and Todd McFarlane's comic, and then the Demo Goblin Hobgoblin showed up and like took on and then him and Moon Knight Black Suited Spider Man teamed up. It was crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> Moon Knight, Moon Knight. That's oh man. Tell me you've read the more the Warren Ellis Moon Knight stuff. No, I haven't. Whoa! I know. I need to get dude, on it, it's, dude. Dude, it's it, here's a here's the beauty about that that his run. It's six issues. They're only one issue, like standalones. Oh really? And they're fantastic. All right. So it's it's so I put it on there. Put it on there. It's 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 a quick read. You'll get through it in like about forty five minutes, if that. All right. And you'll be like, that was some of the best comic book reading I've ever had. Dang, Warren Ellis is just like, I'll, I'll go on Moon Knight. Because Moon he's yeah. such an unassuming character. Yeah, he is. You know? he, I heard someone was not happy with it. And I don't know who was. I don't know what. I they're was wrong. To a I'll challenge him. Anyone. Well, someone was, was like, hey, man, I felt like it. They felt like it was uh, like it was kind of being uh, derogatory towards people with mental illness is what what i remember i could kid. see that a little bit but yeah. not not what you would think um yeah. he's the one who introduced moon knight being in a business suit hmm. yeah so like so he kind of introduced that in secret avengers because he wrote hmm. secret avengers for a while or i think the whole thing or no 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 brubaker did it for i think at first and then he took over for brubaker yeah and then um he and that's when he had moon knight in it and then he that's why i think he kind of liked the character or at least that I think that's what maybe the connection is why he went on into it because I think they just kind of asked him. I think I read their editor just went and said, Hey, do you want to write Moon Knight for a couple for a little bit? He goes, sure. And then, (laughs) and then, yeah. And he said, you can do whatever you want. And then wrote the six craziest bonkers stories you would ever read. Okay. Justin, I'm going to single handedly make you want to read it right now by just telling you the premise of the first issue. All right. Set me up. Set me up. All right. Ready? And for people too. He literally fights punk rock ghost. See, punk's not dead, man. No, dude. No, no. Seriously, though. <laughs> like, if that doesn't make you like go, I'm going to read that right now. Like, yeah. I don't know what would. Because no, seriously, awesome. though, it's like, I remember reading going, this is insane, but amazing. Um, but yeah, no, Marvel, I think, I feel like they're, they're they just... They they're close they're closer to getting like some more fresh names in here. Bring it back to Daredevil before we end here. I will say this: I'm a little I'm a little nervous because you know who's replacing Soul is Chip Zarsky, right? Mm-hmm. And I read his Peter Parker Spider Man uh, spectacular Spider Man stuff, and it wasn't bad. It wasn't great either. There was he did write maybe my some of my favorites, two of my favorite the last like 15, 20 years Spider-Man stories ever, maybe, mm-hmm. which is saying a lot, but like, besides that, I'm like, uh, I don't know. I'm a little like, and especially with how they're setting up with that cover with like the, the fire, the, the mask on fire thing. Yeah. The, the no fear. 
Yeah, I'm like, uh, I'm not sure this is a good like combination. But you know, I'm going to give it a chance. Obviously, I'm going to read it. Yeah. But I'm more interested in like, what's this mini series by Jed McKay? I don't know who the crap that guy is. What, what's going? I don't even know what this is. So there's a mini series coming out in January, which is called the Man. Is this called Man Without Fear? And it's a five issue thing that comes out every week in January, and it's like, it just picks up. It says it picks up in the hours after uh, this issue. And oh yeah, so it's it's everybody they're talking about. I have no idea who this is. It's all Danilo Bayruth is is doing issues one and five. Stefano Landini is doing issue two. I've been Coelho. So I'm like, I don't know any of these guys. And then it then it feeds into the new series. What? So, so wait, the new wait, hold on a second. So when so the Man Without Fear miniseries, I've seen this now out of out of the loop I am. Yeah. So the miniseries is before Zardisky's, but Zardisky's run picks up bef- is coming first. No, no, no. The miniseries comes first. Okay, that's what I thought. When yeah, the and then Zardisky's come comes after it. But are you reading at all the Marvel Knights miniseries right now? The twentieth anniversary. Day? I, 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 I had the first two issues, and I'm planning on reading them eventually. Oh, they're they're actually really fun. I like them. Oh yeah, I, 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 I love Marvel Knights obviously when because I, I love the Ben. Except the Punisher. Kim- <laughs> Well, well, yeah, you told me not to read that. So I didn't read that. Um, but uh, no, but like the uh, when does the this miniseries come out for Daredevil? January, like three weeks, dude. <laughs> Four weeks. I don't know if Dang. it's going cover price January or actual month of January. And if people want to know, like, why why I'm like kind of perplexed by all this is because Soul ends it on a very interesting note. Yeah, and yeah I, I'm not gonna spoil oh, it. Yeah, it, it, it's. He he does, and uh, it's it's kind of one of those. I was surprised. I was like, it's, "What?" It's 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 one of those like. It's cool. It may be unsatisfying to some. I liked it. Okay, I was okay. Like, it's very Sopranos. Yep. If if you know what I'm talking about, the very like the, the finale of Sopranos. Yeah. Which I think is one of the most brilliant endings of TV ever. Oh, for wow. the record. All right. People can hate on it all. I, to me, I'm like, no, it's perfect. It ends beautifully. It's perfect. Anyway, um. So yeah, I mean, like, so before I leave, I have one last thing. I'm very curious what you think. I know, <laughs> yeah. I know, I'm pulling, I'm pulling a Rick shoe here. Um, oh man, top ten Daredevil artists. No, um, uh, no, in the in the comic industry of itself, because you read a lot of comics like me. Do you Love think? Comics. Do you think for Marvel and DC specifically, not Image, because I think you'll know, you'll know exactly what I'm going with this. I think. All right. Do you think there's a shortage of, of great artists? In Marvel and DC. Yeah. And I like, think it's because... Worse than it has ever has before. What was that? Worse than it ever has been in the last uh, like 20 years. You know what? Not, I don't think worse because I, I'm actually more of the mind that there's a lot of great artists and I'm like, why are they not on more higher profile books? Hmm. Um, there, there's some guys... I'm Because I'll read an issue of like Batman or something. I'm like, who the heck is this guy and why is he drawing Batman? How did he get on the Batman book? <laughs> Well, I don't um, see. Here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. I think with art is, it, it for me is that it's just it. There seems to be a shortage. I actually feel it's better on DC than in Marvel. I think the Marvel books really suffer. To be honest, um, at least in my opinion, when I read stuff, I'm like, man, this is not like. I feel like gone are the days of the Mark Bagley's, the John Romita Juniors, um, the Mike. Windigos, it's so funny you say those two guys because those guys when they went to DC, I did not like their work at DC. Well, whatever. I mean, like, but here's my point. You may but not I like, their, like. I like their work on Marvel books. I don't know what but it is. Here, but here's what it is, though, man. Like, I mean, when you get older, your style's gonna change a little bit, or whatever. Um, I totally butchered his name, Mike Wernigo. He he died a while oh, ago. Oh yeah. Um, but but these Ringo. guys who yeah, Ringo. Excuse me. I yeah. butcher people's names, obviously. Dude, but that's what me and my kid were just coloring a picture of his last night. Here's the problem, man. Okay. Is that no, there's no artists that are consistent anymore that are able to do a book for like 12 months or 11 months, whatever. Yeah. And, but maybe it's just that like no one can meet deadlines and you know, and like that, so they, or they, they can go to image and see, and that's and pitch exa- a TV show. Exactly. <laughs> and that's exactly where I was going with it. I okay. was like, you know, like, because I feel the best talent is all at image because they can own their material. And they're, like you said, they're pitching like franchises out over there. Yeah. Like Rick reminder, doesn't do Marvel or DC books anymore. He's like, why? I can just go to image, create a IP and then sell it to like Netflix or Amazon prime. And I'll be good. Yeah, like, like, dude, Mark Millar did it. He sold yeah. everything. It, yeah. And freaking Rob Liefeld did it. And yeah. you know, I mean, everyone, 
it's not dumb. I'm Maybe, not but you know what? Some it. of these guys are starting to form like the new teams. Like right now, like Tom King and Mitch Drads, they're like they're like pals. You know, you got you got Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. That's a team. I think maybe it's not. It's people are starting to figure out who do, are the guys I work with and do well, and people are going to follow me too. You know, there's mm-hmm. some people that are like, hey, I'm, I'm a fill-in guy. I'm a fill-in artist. Because I talked to uh, Brian Hill. He did a fill-in spot on Batman. He's like, yeah, I didn't pick my artist. They just assigned me. Editors assigned to artists. You know, because you don't have that pool yet if you're not a superstar. Once you're a sure. superstar, you're like, I'm working with this cat. You know, mm. and some of these guys they take a long time probably too. They don't have the, I don't know if they have the. Uh, the technical skill or the yeah know, see and that's and that's drive. what i'm wondering and that's what i'm wondering is that these guys that you know, maybe the industry is isn't is not looked at the same way because they're not allowed to develop their style and you know and de- and they, again maybe and that's because we're impatient as readers mm-hmm. and we complain about art too much because the internet i don't know it's fascinating to me because i feel the art is way worse now mm. than than it's ever been and like at least on the Marvel DC books, image books are like incredible. The art's off the chain, but I can't always connect with their books. Like I don't have an emotional connection with their yeah. comics and I'm trying to branch out more to image and I have, but like, to be honest, like I just don't have the deeper connect, like the deepest connection with those, with a lot of the stories and not all of them look great to me. And yeah. you know, I just, of all my time, it's like, my books and I'm dedicated to the characters that I grew up loving, like Spider-Man, Daredevil, you know, all the stuff. And no, oh, of course. So, I mean, it's, it's interesting. I just, I was just curious what, you know, as a comic lover yeah, yourself, I, if you I don't know, man, I, I, w- I would like to see more consistency on books. You know, I get it. Sometimes things happen. I, I look at a guy, there's this guy, Doc Shaner, and I'm like, he is amazing. He, he does a lot of stuff with DC. I think he's a production guy. I don't know. I think he's doing covers and stuff a lot too, but I'm like, this guy needs to be on some books. You know mm. what's up with this cat? Um, well, like, well, like Phil Noto. Like, I love his stuff, and he yeah. did a great Poe Dameron run with uh, Charles Soule, and he also did like Star Wars like um, illustrations for like young adult books. Uh-huh. Um, so he's done a lot of great stuff. He did a lot of cool detective comics covers in the early two thousands. Yeah, so he, this yeah. dude is like, and which by the way, Phil Noto is like a super sweet dude. I met him at Star Wars Celebration. He's like the short, this little like little bearded guy he's adorable i just oh, want to nice. say that for the record he's a super super sweet and i'm like oh this guy's so nice Still no, no. yeah you're i want to you know he's he's a great dude he's a fantastic artist but but i'm just saying i i i can almost predict noto's probably got something going on with with soul because he's been so he's been attached to soul since poe dameron and they've and he went over with him to daredevil and then now that uh soul's leaving darth vader Someone asked him on Twitter, are you done with Star Wars? He goes, not, nope, not even close. So nice. he's got something. There's something coming up with him, with Phil Noto, which would be fantastic. Which, I, like I said, those two together, I'll buy anything with them. So, you know, we'll see. Nice. But it's it's a weird time for comics right now. I feel like it's, I feel like their art, it's, their art is going to show up. But I think that I almost feel like Marvel, they need to like, to me, and to me, art makes or breaks a comic. The writing yeah. can be subpar. It can be mediocre. If the art's not good, then you're not going anywhere. Yeah, I'm, it definitely takes me out, man. And so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, hopefully, Marvel hopefully Marvel DC can figure it out. Yeah. it It's very true. I'm, I'm reading this Nightwing book right now, and they switched the artists. Like, for one issue, I'm like, what the heck? This guy who's illustrating this book's been great. And then they threw in another dude, and I'm like, what the heck? Is it a fill-in, though? It's not. It's not a film. It's a. It's a major arc because it's like this whole story of Nightwing getting shot and grazing his head, giving him like amnesia, and like you have this really great like, like artist on the book, and then you know, mm-hmm. third issue, it's another guy. And you're like, well, who's this guy? This looks. It's not even similar. It's a whole mm-hmm. different style, all gritty and scratchy, and the other guy's very clean and like, like, uh, you know, has has some realism to his his line and. It's just too different. And it's not bad, but it's just a different look. And it, mm. it throws you out of the entire, uh, you know, world. So, Yeah, man. This has been awesome. Yeah, man. Thanks. Sorry. Sorry it went longer than we, we oh, intended. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I, I, hey, I. Pause I 40 up minutes, too. man. I, could I did not say 40 minutes. I said, I did, yeah, we start, if we start, I said if we started at 930, I'd be in good. The, in you? the back of my head, I'm like, man, if I get Paul on a show, this is going to be a three-hour show. No, gonna... it's yeah. I mean, hey, it's hour and a half. Not bad. <laughs> no, that's good. I'm 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 happy, dude. I was just I, I can talk comics 
all night, man. Dude, me so, too. You know I like, this. I I, you can I like rabbit up. trails. I like. Yeah, me you know, too. Wasn't Obviously. much poking the bear. I like poking the bear a little bit, but I can't. Po- oh, I I'm know. not poking like, the bear with you. Me and you are too much alike, though, because we both like poking the bear. Yeah. In a, in a fun, jovial way. It's like. <laughs> of course. You right? po- I, I call it pushing buttons, though. Yeah, yeah. Poking I bear. love pushing buttons. I'm a bear that pushes buttons. <laughs> That's good. It's a bear. I, I, just, I just picture a bear, like. Big and, and a bear just no, it's like the Muppets. Yeah, like Fozzie. No, 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 the other bear. You know, he's like. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. one that actually looks like a bear. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I don't have a time for a hat. Yeah. <laughs> he's wasn't he was like a he wasn't he like a detective in that one movie? He's like yes, like, yeah. and he's a security guard. Another like I think in Muppet State from Space. Oh my God, I love the Muppets. I love the Muppets too. Oh, there oh, you, the, the, the Muppets are going to be on that Disney Plus deal. Yeah. I don't know if it's like their old shows or if it's a new show. Or... It's going to be a new show. Dude, there's poor Muppets. They can't catch a break, man. Uh, it, it, they'll, they'll find their time. It called, my kids, it all my comes kids don't circles. like the Muppets, dude. I tried. They didn't That's, like them. Dude, just send them back. You know? <laughs> just send them back. I'm like, like that. if you watch Muppet yeah. Babies Kids, that was like Spider-Man was at the end of every episode. <laughs> I know! There was that weird cool, Marvel like, Entertainment. Was... I was like, "What does Marvel got to do with Muppets?" I'll, I'll, I'll never forget being like, always being like, "I love that thing." That was awesome. Like the seeds were awesome. there, dude. For like the seeds were the seeds were there. For, seeds were for there. Disney and Marvel. I don't know if Disney mm-hmm. was involved with the Muppets at that point, but they were. They, they, yeah, they weren't. They weren't quite. A, they didn't buy the Muppets until I think the mid nineties. Dude, remember Disney bought the Ninja Turtles for a minute? They did not. Yes, they did. They had them. They had them for like. Second, they had them for a second. So what they do? Nothing. I remember they were at a they were at a Disney Christmas parade, and the freaking Ninja Turtles are there. No, they never owned. They never owned. Bro, the Ninja Turtles. they had some type of an agreement with the. With show them. me, show me where it is, and I'll believe it. Otherwise, there's no way because right. Eastman I'll and Leonard. To, I'll have to look at it, man. Because I swear, they, they might have been partnered. They might have licensed them. May to have Disney been a partnership, but I don't think it went anywhere. Yeah, I mean those guys. Were they were smart? They held it on for so long, and they they and, which is oh, by the way, I think it's Eastman who's still he's still involved with like the comics. Oh yeah, he's he's the one. Laird is like, eh, he got rid of all his. his uh, I read a thing about it. he got rid of all his rights, and now he's kind of like, oh, that sucks. And then Eastman's all like, hey, what's up, guys? I'm delivering pizzas, and you know he's just showing up. He's like the he'll show up like at the conventions. You know he's always he don't care. He's yeah, getting paid, he, man. Yeah, he's awesome. I I do and he, I. I I've read the first like um, twelve issues of that new comic run, and it's great. Oh yeah, it's it's no. it's and he's he's not writing he's not uh like writing the dialogue and stuff, but he's helping plot everything. And dude, it it combines all their their original stuff and um and all the cartoon stuff together in a great package. Like it's a great updated package. Like you get Bebop, Brock, Steady, you get Kang, you get Shredder. You get all that stuff from those original black and white comics, and you got the cart, but you have the fun cartoon, like more like comic or more uh, '80s stuff. It's great. It's great. Nice. See, it's it's he he knows what he's doing. He he's kind of like I'm gonna be the celebrity grandfather to all this stuff. He really is. He so. really is. Okay, dude. I'm sending you the link. You can watch it later. Uh, what, some. What is this link? It's this. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles at the MGM Studios. So you're right. It was kind of like a, they were there, but it was not. Uh, oh god, this is frightening. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty. I'm not bad, watching dude. that. I'm gonna put this on the show notes. <laughs> this <is> just because <laughs> it ties into Daredevil. The Ninja Turtles were victims yeah. of the Daredevil oh, acts. Oh, dude, I, I when I read that comic, when I was I read the the original black and white. Um, yeah. Is it Laird? I always call him Leonard. Um, I, was Laird, I was Eastman and Laird. Is Laird? Yeah, I yeah. read the original Eastman and Laird stuff, and it's fantastic, by the way. And I oh, yeah. realized, I'm like, don't read crap. it when you're nine. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude, that was. I mean, yeah. Again, Costco man, they're selling stuff. Yeah, like here, kids, just come. I, I, well, you know, I if you guys ever have me on Batman on a film for Dark Knight Returns, uh, this is a true story. My first Batman comics was Dark Knight Returns. <laughs> oh crap! I'm not. I am not lying to you. How old? My. Well, I was in first grade. Oh man! My uh, my brother is six years older than I am, uh-huh. and he got the graphic novel, and so like watching Batman sixty six and the Dark Knight Returns graphic novel, 
and having the super powered action figures are like my earliest Batman memories. Wow. And, and you know, and like, and Carrie Kelly Robin was like, Oh, there's a female Robin now. That's cool. Like I just accepted it. Like, no, yeah. you know, like, okay, cool. There's more than one Robin. So anyway, <laughs> so, anyway yeah, so yeah. you're right. Eighties were, were, were a weird time for comics. A great yeah. time. But a yeah. Weird time. Oh yeah. I feel like every decade has a bright spot. You know, every, even I think people hate on the nineties a lot now because of the glut, but there was still some, oh, for- Great oh, stuff, dude, man. I'll defend the 90s, 90s till I die. There's some great stuff. Yeah, in there. 90s is when I jumped in the comics, man. And so I, I, yeah, I love a lot of it. Yeah. Late 80s, early 90s for me. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. We're coming to an end here. Thank you, Paul, for being, yeah, man. again, the devil of the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> I love it. I bestowed that title upon you. I hope that you just are perching up, you know. At the at the wharf or wherever you're hanging out, I think I'd probably get a hernia if I perched. But yeah. <laughs> so okay, Paul, uh, how can yeah. people hit you up on Twitter? They're like, hey man, I really like the words that you said on this show, and I, I want to follow you more. Tell us where they can find you because you're on like well, 700 podcasts. I'm not on 700 podcasts. I'm only on like three. But <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, yeah. You can first of all, the main thing you can get, communicate with me is on Twitter at Herman22 with two N's, aka P Thug. You can also find me on podcasts such as Marvel Newscast. My dog is freaking out. She knows I'm wrapping up, and she knows when I'm wrapping up. She's she can all, hear he's like, plugging. He's plugging. Yeah, no, no, no. Seriously, she <laughs> knows that I'm like heading out. Like I swear, it. she knows when I'm wrapping up a conversation. She goes <laughs> like she wants to go to bed. It's super funny. You're you're adorable, Bean. Um, yeah. So you can find me on Twitter, um, Marvel Newscast with Sean Gerber. We're uh, do that um pretty much on a weekly basis. We had a little bit of a break because of Thanksgiving, but um. Also, I'm on two Star Wars podcasts, Blaster <laughs> Cannon via Den of Geek Network. And I'm also on um, my good friends, the Saga Continues podcast. Um, those guys are some of my good friends. Love those guys. Um, check me out on all those shows. Um, had a good time. I, I guessed a bunch on, not a bunch, but every once in a while I'll you're show like up on that. You're like, a, oh man, we want, you want you to be on the show. We want Paul on. You're like, you're like, you're like a guest. People like you. Like, you, got good, you got good energy, dude. Well, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm all right. Um, uh, but I think but, you're, a fun, but, you're a fun time. You're, you're, you're great. You're great. Um, but no, I, every once in a while I'll show up on Batman on film. You know, we still have a show we haven't done that I yeah, keep it's, bugging you guys it's about. It's in the wings. We, we def. It's it's in the books. It's coming. I know. It's Ryan's fault. <laughs> it is Ryan's fault. It's. I'm just gonna blame Ryan because yeah, I keep telling I, him. I, that's about yeah. how it should go. I, like, I, we're gonna do a I Rocky tell. show. I'm like why? <laughs> I know why. The Rocky. I mean, I told I, them I, they I, need I, to just start a whole new show called. Like on film satellites, it's just called yeah. satellite podcast. Satellites, just satellites. Satellites, because that's what it's what Rick always says. Like, Rick's like, "Oh, we're gonna do a satellite show." I'm yeah. like, "Oh, just, just, there was a time like a long time ago they started a subsite called On Film." You're right. I remember that. And I then uh, they should that. just do that. <laughs> just do blank. And you know, do it. Do them. Do, do your thing. But let's 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 go back to Batman. I want to talk. Yeah. About, well, I want to talk about our topic. Right. Yeah. So yes. There you anyway, go. but yeah, check me out on there. And uh, Justin, thank you for having me on. I know I I didn't mean to invite myself on your show, but I did. No, it worked out because we weren't able to record, and you know it it it's it's great, man. It was a, it was a good time, and the timing was right, and you know Daredevil ending in different ways and different mediums. Yeah, it was time yeah. to talk about him. So it was time. Uh, I thank you so much. So you can follow Absolutely. me at J underscore Rocka on Twitter or uh, Instagram, whatever you want. Uh, follow the show at Let's Go Comic Show on Twitter and Instagram. You can go to the website at www.letsgocast.com where you can check out this show and the Let's Go podcast, which has a new episode coming probably tomorrow and the Start Today podcast. So go ahead and do that. Leave us a positive review on iTunes with five stars, five amazing ninja shurikens that the hand is throwing at us and we'll dodge them, but they'll hit the wall and they'll mm-hmm. spell something amazing for us to read and we'll go, thank you for those positive words, podcast ninja. And so we'll do that. Or you can also go to Patreon, support us on Patreon, help us grow the show, get some stickers, buttons, some fun stuff. And, uh, you know, we got some original content coming to that in 2019. So we finally got some of our stuff in gear. We're going to make that happen. And so we're excited for that. Thank you so much again. My name is Justin. My name is Paul. Let's go. Let's go.